Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI again because we just had a video today, right? So today is Sunday, so you got two videos. All right, this channel is all about complex numbers in case you didn't know. And in this video, we're going to be solving an interesting complex problem. I call this problem interesting because when I first thought about it, I thought that there would be something really, really nice. But I found out something interesting and which I'm going to share with you, obviously, towards the end. So stick around and watch the show. All right, let's get started. I'll be presenting three methods, but I'm also going to talk about an alternative. So I guess you could consider this four different ways. So let's start with the hmm, first method, because first method is kind of nice. Anyways, I don't know what that means. So the first method is going to be like this. I want to use the double angle formulas because anytime you see one plus cosine or one minus sine, well, I'm sorry, one plus cosine or one minus cosine along with sine, if it's a fraction, don't even think about it. Use the double angle, put it up and see what happens. Okay, that's what we're going to start with. So for the double angle formula for sine theta, because I need to cut the theta in half, right? So an angle whose double is theta, basically, that's what I'm talking about. It's going to be two sine theta over two cosine theta over 2. Remember the sine 2x? Same thing. And the, for the cosine, there are three alternatives, but because it's being subtracted from 1, I want to use a formula that has positive 1 in it, which is 1 minus 2 sine squared theta over 2. If you're studying trigonometry, pre-calculus, whatever, or if you're going to be studying calculus, you definitely need to know your trigonometric identities. Now, there's probably a, who knows, maybe less than 100, I guess, right? <laughs> there's quite a few, but some of them you can derive. So now let's go ahead and plug these into our equation and see what happens. Something very interesting is going to happen, trust me. So it's going to be 2 sine theta over 2, cosine theta over 2. That's the numerator. Denominator is 1 minus cosine. So it's going to be 1 minus 1 minus 2 sine squared. Notice that the ones are going to cancel out like this, and we're going to get a positive 2 sine squared. So you can, I guess, cancel them out and put a plus sign. And then two, the twos cancel out after the cancellation of the ones. And then sine squared will also cancel out one of them, at least, right? At least one of these. Okay, cool. What did we end up with? Cosine over sine. What does that mean? It is cotangent. Yay. It's the reciprocal of tangent, which is sine over cosine. Guess what? We now have that this equals i. So what's interesting about it, right? Okay. Now, watch out. If cotangent is this, what is tangent? Tangent is the reciprocal, right? It's 1 over i. 1 over i is negative i, by the way, in case you didn't know. You can multiply by negative i. And here's at this point, we get something super interesting. I'm going to go ahead and call this something else because I don't want to deal with half angles. I don't like them. So I'm going to call this alpha. So here, alpha is theta over 2 or theta is 2 alpha. Make sense? Now, let's go ahead and rewrite our equation with alpha tangent alpha equals negative i. Do you like that? Okay, you'll love this. Now let's go ahead and draw a triangle because whenever you know tangent, you should draw a triangle, right? Why not? So now we have the alpha and tangent alpha is negative. Wait a minute. This is not a real number. It doesn't matter, okay? So I'm going to make the opposite side negative i so I can make the adjacent one and if you use the Pythagorean theorem, quote unquote, you're going to get a squared plus b squared, which is negative i squared plus 1 squared. That's negative 1 plus 1, which is 0. Uh-oh, our hypotenuse is 0. In other words, we don't have a hypotenuse. Wait a minute, what is going on here? <laughs> Something weird, right? That's why I call this interesting. You get it? Now, if you look at sine, cos sine alpha and cosine alpha, you're going to be dividing by 0. Oh, come on, you can't do that, right? That's not allowed. So, cosine alpha and sine alpha are undefined. Houston, we have a problem. Does that mean we have no solution? Let's find out a little bit more. So let's get into the second method because second method is also fun. All these methods are fun, by the way. Anyways, that's what I think at least. Hopefully you'll agree with me on that. If you don't like any of these methods, please let me know, but I'm sure you're going to like them. So second method, cross multiply, something we haven't done before, right? Sine theta equals i minus i cosine theta. You know what, what I'm going to do? I'm going to put this guy over here on the left so I can use some formulas, right? Which is Euler's formula. 
Awesome. Now, this doesn't fit the general pattern because normally I'm supposed to have cosine theta plus I sine theta or cosine something plus I sine something. It's the other way around. But don't worry, we're going to use the hocus pocus formula. I mean the uh, co-angle formula, <laughs> which is sine theta can be written as cosine of pi over 2 minus theta. That's what I mean by co-angles. And cosine theta can be written as sine of pi over 2 minus theta. There are complementary angles. Get it? So this is equal to I. But Euler said something because Euler is awesome, right? So here's what he said. He said that anytime you see cosine alpha plus I sine alpha or cosine something plus I sine something, it's e to the power I something. Did that make sense at all? So let's go ahead and call this beta. So basically, this is what Euler said. Cosine beta plus I sine beta, he said, hey, this is the same thing as e to the power I beta. Brilliant, right? I mean, come on, it's mind blowing. Okay, by the way, this video is not sponsored by Brilliant. I just happened to say that. I have another video that is sponsored by Brilliant. Hopefully you're gonna see that too. Not today, right? Is it today? No, I don't think so. Anyways, it's gonna come up, you'll see it. e to the power I beta equals I. What does that mean? Hmm. Can I write I using the e to the power something? Absolutely. If you think about the Argand plane, you're going to realize that, okay, I can be written as e to the power I pi over 2 because this is where I is. And it just happens to make pi over 2 radians or plus 2 pi and whatever, right? You get it? Real and imaginary. So from here we get cancel the i's and we get beta equals pi over 2. What does that mean? What is beta? Beta is pi over 2 minus theta. So pi over 2 minus theta equals pi over 2. Uh-oh, we got theta equals 0. Great, right? Not really. Because if you remember, the original expression was sine theta over 1 minus cosine theta. Now, if theta is 0, think about the unit circle. If theta is 0, then you're in trouble, right? because cosine theta will be 1 and sine theta will be 0. So you're going to be getting something like 0 over 0. Let's take the limit. No, 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 this is not limits. Come on. Uh-oh, we don't have a solution. Too bad, right? But let's verify one more time. Maybe we do, right? Who knows? Okay, because I was pretty surprised. So one more time, cross multiplication, but this time we're going to do things a little uh, smart. So we're going to take a smarter approach there approaches get smarter and smarter right, as we go. Now, this is my equation. Notice that I can be written as 0 plus 1i. Come on. These are two complex numbers. So this is supposed to be 0. This is supposed to be 1, which means theta is pi over 2. <laughs> we don't have a solution, right? Because as you know, pi over 2 will cause a problem. Note that I guess you could call the fourth method, but if you know of a different method, something that I didn't talk about, please let us know. I'm dying to know alternatives. Okay, now, what's the fourth? <laughs> okay, you could also use the following formulas. I'm not, even, I'm not even sure what is gonna come out of this, but something interesting will come out, I think. I feel like it's gonna be interesting. So these are identities that come from Euler's formulas, and yes, you can plug these in and see what happens and let, let us know. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.